Welcome to B&B RV. We're located at 8101 East 40th Avenue in Denver, Colorado. Today, we'll be walking you through the 30-foot Class C with no slide, the 2024 Gulfstream Conquest 6280. First, we'll show you around the outside of the coach, and then we'll take a look at the inside. Uh, so starting here on the driver's side, this first compartment is going to hold your generator. Uh, the power switch for the generator is on the inside, so you shouldn't have to get into that compartment for anything. Uh, just be aware that the exhaust does run underneath right here. Uh, it does stick out a little ways, uh, and it will be a little bit hot when you're running your generator. Uh, also, keep your windows closed just so none of those fumes go in there. Uh, the generator is going to be for anything 110 in the house part of the coach if you're not plugged into shore power. That includes your air conditioner, your microwave, your TV, and anything you're plugging into those 110 outlets. Uh, this next compartment here just holds your batteries uh, for the house. Uh, everything else in there is running off those house batteries if you're not plugged in or, or running uh, the shore power there. Uh, lights, uh, awning, basically everything else in there is running off of those, so you just want to make sure that those stay charged up. When you're plugged into shore power, they're constantly charging, uh, driving charges those up, uh, and then running your generator as well. There is a solar panel on here that helps with a trickle charge with those. Uh, once we get in the inside, we'll show you the solar controller in there. That's the best way to monitor your battery voltage. Moving down, we just have a couple of vents here. So you have your water heater vent, your furnace vent. Um, propane is stored in this compartment here. Uh, furnace, stovetop burners, oven, and your water heater are going to run off of the propane. Uh, to refill that, you're going to want to take it to a designated fill station, uh, some truck stops, U-Hauls, uh, hardware stores, places like that. Uh, you just pull in there and they'll fill that up for you. Uh, moving on down, um, we have a couple of options for water. Um, so you have a city water uh, where if you have a spigot at your campsite, you can hook up the hose directly here. Um, it's this bottom one here. It says city water connection. You just pop that off, hold your water hose up to it, screw it in. Once that's screwed in and turned on, everything water-wise works. If you don't have that, you'll have to use the onboard water tank uh, and turn on your water pump on the inside. Again, we'll go over that a little bit more on the inside there. Um, above the city water is your black tank flush. Um, I would recommend not using that fresh water hose uh, or anything like that for that guy. You want to use a separate water hose. If you're renting this vehicle, you don't even have to worry about that at all. Uh, scooting on down here, uh, you have your cable hookup. Um, so there is a TV inside there. Um, just hook up the coax cable, do a channel scan, change your source, all that kind of stuff there for the cable TV. Uh, next in line here is the tank fill for your for your fuel. Um, so this vehicle just takes regular unleaded gasoline. Next up, we have your electrical hookup. So if you have an electrical connection at your campsite, the end with the ring plugs into the coach here, and then the other end is going to plug into that 30 amp hookup. We also provide a 110 adapter that just slides on the end there, uh, where you can plug that into a regular 110 outlet if the 30 amp is unavailable. Uh, outdoor shower here. Uh, so this is just a hot and cold. Um, there's a quick connect hose that just pops in place there. Uh, and then you can have a little outdoor shower. Um, and this is to fill up your onboard water tank. So this one's gravity fill. So you just unscrew the lid, put the hose in there, and then it'll start running out of there once that's full. Right below all these is your waste holding tanks. So the waste holding tanks, you have two tanks. You have a black tank for your toilet wastewater and a gray tank for your sink and your shower wastewater. Um, down below here, you just open this up. Uh, you'll see a couple of valves and then your inlet there. Uh, dump hose is stored in the bumper. So you just pull the rubber square off, pull that dump hose out of there and connect it here. You'll want to pull the black one first for your toilet wastewater, close that up. The gray one will be second so that soapy sink and shower water can help rinse that out. Uh, once that's done, you can put everything back, close up all the valves, and then um, under the bathroom sink, there'll be a couple of uh, chemical packs. Just flush one of those down the toilet with some water. That helps break everything down in there, but also keeps everything fresh on the inside for you. Lastly, on this side, we have a nice size pass-through storage compartment here. Around back, we have a, a spare tire here. Um, up top, we have a backup camera. Um, so that engages when you put it into reverse. Camera is actually where your rear view mirror would be. Uh, ladder's really just for maintenance, so no patio or anything up there. Uh, mostly just for our service guys to get up there. Moving around to the passenger side, we have the other end of that pass-through compartment here. Um, there are some magnets on some of those compartments to hold that lid up there. 
On down, we have a couple of exterior 110 plugins. Uh, so again, shore power generator, you can power those. Sometimes we'll plug in like a radio or something out here like that. Um, and then finally on this side is, is one more large storage compartment. And on to the inside. Here in the cab, it's going to look pretty similar to what you'll see in your personal vehicle. Um, again, the backup camera is up in the rear view mirror area there. Um, there is a tow haul function on here and uh, an, uh, the ability to shift up and down through gear. So as you're going through the mountain passes, you may want to gear up or gear down. Um, the tow haul button here, all you have to do is push that button and it'll automatically drop you a gear, uh, helping you get a little bit more power up the mountains and also helping with braking coming down. Um, the other option is there's a plus and minus button on the gear shift here. Um, so you can put that down into M uh, right below the drive, the D and then the M. Uh, and then you can use the plus and the minus to either gear up or gear down. And then just putting it back in the drive will disengage that of drive like normal. Um, the other cool feature about this is it has an emergency start. So let's say you um, leave your headlights on overnight and the engine battery dies. You get in and you try to start it and it will not start. Behind me over my head, there is an emergency start button. So you'll just push and hold that button, uh, turn your key. And what that does is it jumps the engine battery from the house batteries in the back, uh, enabling, enabling you to start your engine. Just inside your entry door, we have a couple of things. Uh, so down below, you'll see a big red switch. That's your main battery disconnect for the house part here. Um, ultimately, turning that off will kill the power to everything in the back. So you want to leave that on for your entire trip. Uh, and then above that, you have a light switch here. Uh, there's a light above me uh, in the stairwell. So above your main entry door, you have your control panel here. Um, starting up here, this is your generator display. So that'll show you how many hours are currently on the generator. That works like an odometer. So as you use that, it'll just start adding the hours to that. Um, to start it, you'll push and hold this start button. You'll see that little orange light start flashing right there and the engine turning over. So once that light turns solid red, you actually hear the engine kick on, then you can let go of the start button. Still takes about 20, 25 seconds for the relay to bring power back to the coach. Uh, but your microwave lights will come on, you'll hear that beep, and that'll be the indication that you have power from the generator. Again, you'll need that for anything 110 back here if you're not plugged into shore power. Uh, beside that, you have your tank levels. Um, so you're just pushing the button here, and you can kind of see this gauge light up right here. Uh, so your gray tank is, again, for your sink and shower wastewater. Black is for your toilet wastewater. You have your fresh water tank, which is that onboard water tank, uh, and then your battery here. Uh, for the battery, I would recommend using your solar controller to keep track of that voltage. Uh, that is just inside this cabinet here. That'll display uh, how much voltage you have in your house batteries. Just make sure that stays at 12 volts or higher. You can charge those by running your engine, turning your generator on, and plugging into shore power. Uh, below that, we have several different light switches here. Um, and the awning light is for the rope light under your awning. There is a step light down above that main battery disconnect down below. Uh, porch light above your entry door, and then the ceiling light is for the, the main light in here. There are other types of lights in here. So any of the lights that you see with the little metal ring around them is actually is a touch light. So you just touch that metal to turn it on and then touch it to turn it back off. Um, water heater here, uh, that runs off your propane. Um, so just flip that on, takes about 20, 25 minutes for that to heat up that six gallon tank there. Uh, and then the last one here is for your water pump. Uh, so once you flip that on, that builds up the pressure in that system and then it turns off. Uh, once you turn the water faucet on, you'll, you'll hear that kick on and start running again. And that, again, is what you'll need uh, to use the onboard water tank. Um, last switch here is for your patio awning. So on the passenger side, you have that big awning. Uh, just push out to run that out and in runs that back in. Uh, just make sure you retract that if there's any kind of inclement weather, windy, rain, snow, anything like that. Uh, just make sure that that is retracted. Here above your cab, you have uh, what they call a cab over bed. Um, there is some storage uh, cabinets back behind there. Um, to convert this into a bed, you'll see this little pad up top. Simply slide that into place here. There is a ladder uh, in the corner, just unsnap that, and that hooks into these metal hooks on this side. There is also a safety net with a couple of buckles that'll buckle in, hook in on either side there, just to prevent anybody from rolling out of there. Uh, and then a privacy curtain as well. So there's a, a couple of snaps on either side here that that snaps into, uh, create some privacy from those cab windows there. 
Uh, moving up here, we have a four-person dinette uh, with four seat belts in there and then a three-person sofa. Both of these also convert into beds. For the dinette, there is a latch underneath the table here that you just want to drop down. Pull these cushions up and out of the way, and then you'll push from the back on this table to drop that down. And then the, and then the cushions are just going to fit into that space to complete that bed. Across from there is your sofa. Uh, this again converts into a bed. You just want to move these cushions out of the way. This is like a futon, so you're just going to lift on the front, kind of jackknifes down and lays flat there for you. Here in the kitchen area, we have a nice uh, refrigerator freezer. Uh, this does run off the house batteries alone. Um, moving over here in your kitchen area, we have a few drawers and a cabinet, a sink, uh, microwave up top here, a vent fan with the light as well. Uh, then you have a three burner stove and an oven. To light those burners, you just wanna move this glass top out of the way. This is not a cooktop, so make sure that that's leaned back. For the burners, uh, that's these first three knobs here. You'll just turn that to the to the position here and, and then turn uh, the first button for your spark. Uh, and then the last knob here is for your oven. So you'll turn it to that flame position, push in on this button, and then you'll hit that spark button to light the pilot light in there. Uh, once you see that's lit, then you can adjust the temperature and you'll see that ignite there. And then there is a little button here as well for a little bit of accent lighting. In the bathroom area, we have a separate room for your toilet and your sink. Have a vanity up top there as well. Uh, directly across from there, we have a full-size shower. In the bedroom, we have a, a queen-size bed. We have a small wardrobe on either side here and then some overhead storage windows on either side and the back as well. The thermostat is also located in your bedroom. So this is where you control your air conditioner and your furnace. Uh, air conditioner runs off of 110 power, again, shore power or generator there. Uh, so to use this, uh, the leftmost button here is your power mode button. Uh, so as you cycle through there, uh, you'll push that button, you'll see your fan setting, then your air conditioner, then your furnace, and then off. Once you get to whichever you want to engage there, let's say it's the furnace, stop on the furnace and then use the uh, arrow buttons there to adjust the temperature. Thank you for watching our walkthrough video on the 2024 Gulfstream Conquest 6280. We'll see you out there.